And he wanted to make sure you knew this. So they put him on the World Wide Wrestling Federation, talking about the monolith on Mars. They put him on 30 Rock, talking about the monolith on Mars. He was on Dancing with the Stars with Pamela Anderson, talking about the monolith on Mars. Start to embed the idea of alien cultures into our world. Now, Buzz says it was either aliens or gods that put it there. I'm not sure which. But so they sent up another system up there. It's called the Marsis. And this kind of goes to Mars and Isis. And these are the two uh, fighting gods that really, if you want to get deeper into the story, you got to get to uh, Velikovsky and Worlds in Collision. And you'll find that, that Venus was a comet that came into our solar system and that it caused great havoc in the entire solar system until it settled down. But then it had kind of sent Mars off on its own careening path. And so most of the ancient stories of catastrophe, the deluge and, and uh, the stories in, I believe it was Isaiah or Joshua, uh, telling the story of incoming asteroids, incoming fireballs, and then followed by this massive, uh, well, the Earth stood still. Um, so now they have sent up rockets to Mars's moons, Phobos and Deimos. Now this means fear and panic are the names of Mars's moons. <laughs> now Phobos has been one that has been very strange. Now no one ever saw Mars's moons until 1877, even though we had telescopes long before that. Uh, suddenly there they were. And now we have uh, gone and investigated with the Marsus and we found out that Phobos was hollow. Now, Phobos is the one that every satellite that's ever been sent to it has vanished. And recently, the Russian uh, satellite, uh, Phobos, what did they call that one? Phobos Grunt, has just recently crashed back to Earth. Uh, this was just in the news not long ago. So once again, another lost Phobos satellite. But the Marsus program managed to go in silent running, as if it was some sort of silent submarine. They shut down all electronics, they shut down all systems, except for the ones necessary to see inside of Phobos. And they did. And they reported it hollow. They also reported, well, we won't be able to show you a picture of the monolith. They brought it up again. Uh, because we had to shut off all the electronics to do a silent running to Phobos. This is all going on in your space right now. So the next portion of the story, after Werner von Braun had told us that it would make it through asteroids, the next part was extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial threat was what's needed. And so, of course, all of a sudden, we've got films, the event, we've got V, we've got you know, endless alien stories. Did you know that the day the Earth stood still, which uh, once again goes back to the Mars-Venus story, but the movie itself, have you seen this new one? Uh, it pretty much depicts humanity as a lost cause, and that any aliens that wanted to come visit should probably just wipe us all out. Right? If you watch the movie, that's, the, that's pretty much the moral of the story. Well, they decided this would be a really good movie to send to Ursa Major. So it was simulcast. While people were watching in the theater, they had simulcast the day the Earth stood still to Ursa Major. Or, I'm sorry, Alpha, no, wait. Alpha, Alpha Centauri. Centauri. That's right, they sent the Doritos commercial to Ursa Major. <laughs> with with the, the device iScat. Now, you guys might remember iScat because it was right below this. All right, ISCAT is another antenna array, much like the HARP system, which many people have heard about. Uh, I did make the first documentary on HARP, by the way, ever. <laughs> uh, but this was a big story here at Brave New Books, thanks to Lucas, and a, a really large story on my website as well, because I have been covering this thing for quite some time. Before it happened, I was discussing these clouds and their spirals. Okay, so this wasn't the first one to happen. Do you, how many of you are familiar with the Norway spiral, or is this new news? Okay, yeah, many people saw Lucas's production. Uh, <clears throat> the Norway spiral was, was fairly easily explained, and, and what had happened is in America, we launched what was known as the Cloud of Care, and Care stood for the Charged Aerosol Release Experiment. And what they did was launch a rocket up into the upper atmosphere, about 177 miles up, which is just about the exact height of the International Space Station. 
and they released an aluminum oxide cloud, which then burst out and looked like some hole had opened in the galaxy, and then it sucked itself up and vanished, right? And uh, I covered the launch live on my website and for my radio show on the Free Zone. And then the news broadcast about the cloud of care, but they didn't know what it was. They said, we've checked with all authorities. We've, I, no one knows what this thing is. And yet I covered it live on my show. <laughs> I think that the news probably could have figured it out. But instead of telling you that it was an aluminum oxide cloud launched up to test noctilucent clouds, they said, we think it's aliens. <laughs> and I got that news clip in the film. So you can see it for yourself. Well, the noctilucent cloud with the aluminum oxide cloud that they, they sent out uh, is made of sapphire. And so the very first scientist to have a look at the Norway spiral will say, well, it's obviously aluminum oxide because you can see the blue of the sapphires emitting from it. Now, the cloud of care didn't form a spiral like this. The cloud of care, it did spiral because the rocket spiraled as it ejected it, but it didn't make a crazy pattern such as this. What we got here is that right down here at the bottom of this hill is the ISCAT antenna array in Norway. And so what it seems is they're pulsing this thing with their ionospheric heater. Now ISCAT has the capability, like I say, to send Doritos commercials to Ursa Major. I'm not exactly sure what they're testing with this system, but I've been watching a lot of them. And this isn't the only one. It's been over Russia, over China, over Norway and over America, so this is uh, something new that they're, they're dealing with. But of course they're trying to bring us to the fear of alien invasion. So of course the Vatican came forth and uh, they said, well, we're going to have a massive ET conference. And uh, they had their scientist, uh, their reverend uh, Benjamin Funes, come forward and say, well, yeah, aliens are real. Yeah, and they didn't suffer original sin because they weren't born of Eve. <laughs> yeah, so now we got the Vatican saying, well, yeah, aliens are real, and they're, they're better than us. <laughs> Another Vatican astronomer, this guy, very strange, he's actually the curator of the Pope's personal meteor collection, and he came forward and said, well, yeah, I'd baptize E.T. if he showed up. <laughs> but Benjamin Funes, he was actually sent off to uh, work with CERN. And as soon as Benjamin Funes, this guy was uh, admitting absolutely, you know, absolutely aliens are real, now he's working with CERN, and uh, they're launching off this alpha magnetic spectrometer to see into the anti-universe. And as you see, I had many uh, different, different examples of these strange missiles. And then uh, NASA got involved, and they got a Rothschild to be their alien ambassador. Yeah, imagine that. Uh, Lynn de Forrester Rothschild, or Lynn Forrester de Rothschild, is now the NASA alien ambassador. And they weren't the only ones. Uh, they was also brought forth by the Royal Society, had a massive meeting on it. The UN announced their alien ambassador, <coughs> who was uh, Moslin Othman. And she categorically denies being the ambassador to aliens, but that was the point she was given. So, uh, Moslin Offman. So, all of a sudden, we had the Royal Society, we had the Vatican, we had the UN, we had America, NASA, all coming together and getting together their alien ambassadors ready to take on what's to come. <clears throat> Meanwhile, they began launching off into space. The secret space war carried forward, and most people don't know about the flying Twinkie. Maybe some of you have heard of this. <laughs> it is known as the X-37B, and it is a mini space shuttle about the size of a pickup truck that is robotic and carries around with it some sort of secret space program. So the X-37B, NASA and Boeing's uh, accomplishment at a secret space program is now orbiting us right now. It has all kinds of crazy antenna arrays. It is a military vehicle. It is not at all a, a uh, you know, private space program like SpaceX or anything. It is, it is military. Along with that, they launched the HTV-2, the hypersonic 
technology vehicle, which uh, they lost three times, but after not losing it, um, they actually found out that it can make it across the ocean in about 15 minutes. I forgot the exact speed, uh, but many times over the speed of sound. Which oceans? Uh, over the Pacific. Uh, it could make it from, I think they said it could make it from California to New York in 10 minutes. And it's up there now, you know, it's, it's ready to drop in at any moment. And meanwhile, we have many antenna arrays around the globe. This one is in Australia, and as I began talking about it, lo and behold, if there wasn't this strange droid eye that started showing up in the satellite relays. So all of a sudden now we've got, and you'll see that's directly over the antenna array, which is right here, and uh, the Learmount uh, Solar Observatory is there as well. Now, I've had some theories about what's going on, and of course I often go back to the secret societies and their, their symbols and their messages, and they constantly speak of the second sun. And there's always the symbolism of the two suns, even Barack Obama's symbol of the rising sun or Target's symbol of the sun. And the sun behind the sun was always a key figure. Well, it's been found that there was a, a potential binary star for our solar system. And it's known as G1.9. And strangely, it looks exactly like the Firefox logo. All right? Now, we found that most solar systems are binary. Most of them do have a second sun, some even trinary like uh, Sirius. But when you are in a binary star system, you know, you go out and you get pulled away and you move slower as you get distant. But then as these two suns start to come together, speed picks up. And the closer we get to the second sun, the faster everything goes. But you would never be able to determine this from Earth because all the planets would be speeding up, the entire solar system would be speeding up, and so everything would stay relatively the same. But if you had giant monolithic structures that watched long distances of time, you would know when the planet started to speed up. Many have talked about the, the potential of, of some sort of catastrophe coming our way. We had Elenin, we had Planet X, uh, well, we had the String of Pearls event where the comet struck Jupiter. Uh, I personally believe in this binary star system. And there is a group of scientists in Spain, um, star viewers, who have announced that G1.9 is heading straight towards us. NASA says, no, no, it's an exploding nova, it's just getting bigger. And they said, no, it's getting bigger because it's heading at us, and we are heading at it. Now, of course, this always goes back to the ancient stories and the ancient past, and uh, we find that, you know, we, we have these certain triggers that bring about fear. And, of course, one of these triggers, other than, yes, we can, being, thank you, Satan, is uh, 666. I don't know if you know, but in Hebrew, 6 looks like this. <laughs> So your monster, 666, 